Let's give him a hand of praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you, Almighty God. Hallelujah. There's none like you in all of heaven or all of earth. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that we can come together. We thank you that we can gather and worship you in spirit, worship you in truth. We thank you that we can declare the greatness of our God. And Lord, we desire for you to be lifted up, for you to be exalted, for you to be glorified. And Lord, you know we know that you inhabit the praises of your people. So Lord, as we acknowledge who you are, and acknowledge all that you've done in our hearts and our lives. We do it from the depths of our being. Bring glory and honor to your name. So, Lord, have your way in this service today. We pray, Lord Jesus, that people be saved. We pray that bodies be healed, people baptized in your spirit, yokes be lifted and burdens be removed. But above everything, may your name, may it be lifted up and exalted and glorified over all the earth. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Come on forward and let's worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure. I'll praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when outnumbered. Praise when surrounded.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Sarai, I'm just going to need a little more vocal right here. Just there. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about song three. <laughs> Hallelujah. We've been singing about, that's already sounding a lot better. Thank you, Sarai. Thank you, sweetheart. Getting rid of fear. Getting rid of fear. Putting fear in its place. And keeping mindful that we're doing that daily. Amen. The title of this next song is a little strange. The breakup song. Normally when you think of breakups, it's not a positive thought. <laughs> Except when it comes to fear and saying, you're out of here. <laughs> Amen. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. Had as much of you as I can take. It's gone so done, so over being afraid. I've gone through the motions, I've been back and forth. I know that you're thinking you've heard this before. I don't know how to say it, so I'm just gonna say it. Well, thank you.
we got weapons. Hallelujah. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Oh, let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Just let
Hallelujah. If there's one thing that I can impress upon the church and anybody that will ever listen to my voice, it's if we don't start getting used to praising God down here, I don't know what we're going to do in heaven. We better, like, go ahead and let go and let loose. Because what do you think we're going to do in heaven? We're not going to float around on clouds, church. We had the most beautiful homegoing service yesterday for Kasim's mother, a saint of God. We were able to celebrate her life because we know she's still living. The most beautiful tribute that their family did. Father, mother, and their beautiful daughter. All singing, and we just joined with them. Worshiping God. Kasim said, I want a service. Andrea said, I want a service where we worship God. How fitting, because that's what Sandra's doing, is worshiping God. Several years ago, God started giving Jerry a series of messages on heaven and challenging her. If you don't start thinking in two dimensions, you live on this earth, but if you don't live with heaven in mind of what the full picture of what this life is all about, you are missing out. There are treasures of heaven. There are things from heaven that get poured into us so we can get through down here on this earth. One thing this church needs to be challenged in, and I drop a gauntlet on this. May there never, ever, ever be a service Sunday, Wednesday, whatever day, Saturday. Where we aren't praising God and we don't have a ready praise. That ought to be bubbling up. Get rid of the junk on the way to church if you need to. I'm not saying we don't go through stuff. Get rid of it before you hit the door. God deserves our best. I love something that you shared about your mom. She was telling him how to dress for church and to give his best. I say give the best on the inside and the out. Give the best on the inside and the out. Yes, yes. Whatever, if it's just a spark, if that's all you've got. Because listen, I'm not, I know there are days you may not like be feeling it. Thank you, Jesus. We don't live by feelings. I love something Joyce Meyer said years ago. She said, if you don't feel it, just go ahead and do it anyway. Even if you're fearful, just press on through it and do it through the fear. Yes. I'm like, hallelujah, that's a word from God. Just do it. Yes. Do it. But there's got to be a praise in our hearts because he deserves it. And as we sing this next song, I pray that we all hear the angels because they are singing with us. Amen.
blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire. Time after time. Born of his spirit. Washed in his blood. And what he did for me on Calvary is more than enough. Cause I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Cause I trust
Father, that in the presence of Almighty God, in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy, and joy everlasting, Lord. You've told us that on this earth that we're strangers and we're aliens. We're passing through here. This is not our home. Oh, but Father, just like the patriarchs of old, the matriarchs, they were looking for a city whose builder and maker was Almighty God. And Lord Jesus, you've told us by your word. In the book of John, you said that you go and you prepare a place for us. And if it were not so, you would have told us. And we thank you, Lord. And we thank you. We thank you for the redemptive power of your blood. We thank you for salvation that you brought to us even while we were yet sinners. We thank you that you've redeemed us from the curse of the law, the curse of sin, the curse of death. You hold the keys to hell, death, and the grave. You've redeemed us back to the Father if we choose to believe and trust in you. And we can cry, Abba, Father. And Lord, we thank you that not only have you redeemed us back to the Father, but you've made us join heirs in your inheritance. You've given us a work to do while we're on this earth. Lord Jesus, you spoke to your disciples, and you said, All power and authority has been given unto me. Now go into all the world and make disciples baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost and teach them what I have taught you. So Lord Jesus, we know according to John 3, 16 that you so loved this world that you gave your only begotten Son, Father, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And Lord, you didn't come to this world to condemn the world. You came so that the world might be saved. And right now, gathered around your throne, are men, women, and children from every nation, every tongue, every tribe, and every kindred. And Lord, if that's what heaven looks and sounds like right now, that's what the church here on this earth ought to look and sound like. Your households of faith ought to be men and women from every nation, tongue, tribe, and kindred. So, Lord, we here at Celebration, first of all, we throw open wide the doors of our heart, and we say the nations are welcome. We throw open wide the doors of the church and say the nations are welcome. Together we will grow in the things of your spirit. That together we will grow in the love and the mercy and the grace of the Lord. And we'll reach back out to a world that doesn't yet know you, Lord. We need an outpouring of your Holy Ghost right here in our nation. We need an outpouring of your Holy Ghost across this globe. 
Now, Father, you've told us that when we are to pray, we call to the winds of the four corners of the earth, to the north, the south, the east, and the west. And we say, give up those that are being saved. And they come to the kingdom with glad and sincere hearts. And Lord Jesus, we reach out and share your love. And Lord, before we even pray for our own nation, you've told us to always pray for the peace of Jerusalem, to pray for your holy people. And Father God, we pray for Abraham's seed. We pray, Lord Jesus, open the eyes of their heart and they find, may they find Yeshua HaMashiach. May they find you, Messiah. And Lord Jesus, we know according to your word that they will be that last day evangelist during that time of the tribulation. So Lord, we call souls to your kingdom. We pray for America. We need an outpouring of your spirit. Father, darkness has come in upon the land. And Lord Jesus, you've said where darkness abounds, grace does much more abound. May we in the body of Christ, may we rise up and may we speak the word of God boldly for, Lord, your word, your word breaks every yoke. Your word destroys every scheme of the enemy. You said that when the enemy tries to come in like a flood, you would raise up a standard. Your word is the standard. Jesus, you are the standard. And, Lord, we thank you. And we pray right now, every stronghold be destroyed. Amen. Be brought down in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All division, all hatred, yes, yes. all lies, all deception, come down in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your power is destroyed by the blood of the Lamb. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. We pray for those in authority. We pray for the president, the vice president the Congress, the Cabinet, the Supreme Court. We pray for all state governments, Governor Cooper and all the other governors, all state houses, all state senates, all local authorities. We pray over our nation, all in leadership. Them and their households be born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, the fire of God burning in their lives. And together, may the word of God be a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their paths. And may we all walk a highway of holiness, Lord. May we walk according to your word. May we walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Lord, we're paying our tithes and giving offerings now. And I know that your children have been naming their seed. They've been calling loved ones to the kingdom. They've been praying for new jobs. They've been praying for increases on their jobs. They've been praying people to be set free from bondages. And your word says that every seed will produce after its own kind. You said these three things shall remain as long as the earth remains. Seed, time, and harvest. So Lord, we're believing in the midst of it, harvest time. Yes. We're believing for answers to prayers. And Lord Jesus, as Joshua declared to Israel, he said, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So, Father, right now, we give and it's given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Men and women pour back into our lives so that we can give again. And we call souls, souls, souls to your kingdom. 
We call people baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yokes lifted, burdens removed. And we declare freedom to the captives in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You are free to come and give. touch from the Lord and so Cindy I'm just asking you to stand in for your mom but we're lifting up Ruth and the enemies tried to attack Nathaniel's stomach and we're saying get yep. out of here and we all get out of here yes. 
Remember, get we out want of to here. lift up Norma Jean as well. Praying for Norma Jean. We're yes. praying for Brian's mother. Brian's total mom healing. As well. yes. yes. And we're praying, we're praying for, for Nasir. Nasir, yes. But he just said, as a point of contact with them, just. Amen. Let's just stand in the gap. Hallelujah. Sit right there, buddy. <laughs> Stir the water. Thank you all so much for bringing y'all's faith into agreement Amen. with those. And uh, we, be we believe these things are done. Amen. 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 Brian, your mother is the healed of the Lord. Lord. It's done in Amen. Jesus' name. I love it. She's Hallelujah. So we all came in agreement. We all came into agreement with that. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. A lot of things getting ready to come up this week. Okay. I'm just going <laughs> to spin this around. Uh, please. You, any friends that you want to bring next Saturday at 11 for the ladies, we'll be right here for yes. the ladies. But this is a catered luncheon. I want to know I've brought enough food. You can invite as many friends, write down as many names, however many names are on this page. That's what we're bringing for. So don't say, oh, I can't, I can't. And if during the week somebody else comes up, please give yes. Cindy a, a text, let her know, hey, the yep. count's gone up because they'll give us to the end of the week. But I just really want to know how many are coming because we want to be prepared. This this luncheon is free. Yes. Free luncheon, but uh, bring your friends because then following the luncheon, you know Cheryl's going to share with us, and you know it's going to be such a blessing just to, to hear from her. So there's that. The men, they're going to yes. be meeting. With We're meeting uh, next Saturday morning, 8 15. Saturday, but y'all are doing it at 8 30. 8 15. It's usually when we gather. With him. Yeah, maybe 8.30. 30. And uh, coming in at midnight. Can yeah. you give Harry 15 extra minutes and do an 8.30? Yeah. Because I, I think he'd appreciate it. Yeah, they won't have a Just problem that with that. 15-minute buffer. They're flying in from California, but that was the flight they were able to get. Pray for your pastors. we got to pick them up at midnight. I'm like, Jesus, give us some cuckoo. Okay, Lord. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. We're 10 o'clock or so. Then I, uh, what? We're going to be at the airport in Charlotte. 10 o'clock, I'm in between the sheets. Well, <laughs> yeah, pray for us. Oh, it's going to be good. Yeah. 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 Yeah
be awesome. Awesome Amen. time together. We will gather here for a service with them. Yes. You know, this is one of the first services. I think uh, Harry started traveling again as far as on an airplane, just getting out and about beyond California. Yes. Just last fall. And just like Sunil, God did a great miracle. Great for miracle. Him. Because he went through the same, I mean, it was like the devil was trying to wash him out. Yep. I mean, I don't know if y'all remember it, but Cheryl had the prayer warriors around that hospital doing the Jericho march. Jericho march. marches amen. and dancing and, and singing. Uh, and amen. It's just going to be a joy. I mean, we've been connected to them these years, but just through talking on yeah. the telephone and things like that. So this be is going to be with correspondence them, yeah. and telephone. But this will be a, just a fun reuniting and they're excited to see everybody bring bring some friends say hey it's called sunday let's just let's absolutely go out. You're gonna enjoy listening. let's fill the house yeah, fill the house worship I'm the lord i'm convinced of this one thing with our family if we would all come on the same day this place would be full it would be has anybody ever had that thought except me i'm like jesus can we all come on the same day because if we do this house, the house will be, will be full, full. <laughs> it will be but Amen. Amen. Um, no special music. Yeah, I know we got a special music. Was there anything other than our chili cook-off following oh, the service? Someone told me that Chris had a birthday. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. And not just any birthday. She, me and her having those great birthdays. This is sensational. <laughs> Anyone else have a birthday this week? Happy birthday to you. I know we're going to have some special music yes. right now. Yes, yes, so, yes. Hallelujah. If the Lord's mind, good. Well, get ready just to stand up and join us on this one. Hallelujah. I don't know that you're going to be. I like the way Donna puts it. I don't think we can sit in our seat. See, because what did you say? I said. If you're, it's something about the wood. Yeah. Your wood is yeah. wet if you can't get up and sing to this song. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. have to have a hallelujah. Yes. Because <laughs> Steve introduced this song, if you would. Well, I tell you what, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's so good to be in his house this morning and to see all the saints Amen. gathered together. Amen. And we had such a wonderful home going for mom yesterday. And I tell you what, God just moved. And one of our goals out of all that was, number one, to bring glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. Number two was to bring honor to my mother. And I think we accomplished that. I think I know we accomplished that. Yeah. The Spirit of God just came into the house, and you know, the people that were supposed to be here were here. And they got to be a part of that, and we had some special family here that came in from out of town, and we were able to minister to them. And they just poured out their feelings to me after the service, and you know, the things that you said, it really touched home. And it touched home, it touched their heart. And that's what it's all about. You know, we're supposed to minister to one another. And not only just as blood family, but also as church family. And that's what you did for me yesterday. That's what you did for Andrea and Gabby. You guys ministered to us. And we needed that. We needed you guys to wrap your loving arms around us and say, it's going to be okay. You will make it through this difficult time. Brother Tony came by uh, last week, and I was th sitting in the audience, and it was still fresh. You know, the fresh, the pain is still so very fresh. And he came up to me, and he says, uh, you know, I love you, brother. It's going to be okay. I told myself I wasn't going to cry. But I looked into his eyes and I saw the compassion of Jesus Christ just pouring out of him. And I broke down and cried like a baby on his shoulder. I'm sorry I messed up your shirt, buddy. 
I messed up a few shirts that morning. But you know, that's okay. That's what those shirts are for. They can, they can be cleaned. Right? Those tears were washing those shirts as I was weeping on them. Brother Philip, thank you for your shoulder. It's like holding on to a big warm blanket. <laughs> it's comforting, people. It's comforting. And I needed that. And I just want to thank this body for being there as our family. Even our family wasn't there like you guys have been there. And it blew my family away. They said, wow, this, all of this, and you did all of this? And I said, no, my church family did this. And they were like, what? Those people must really love you. Oh, well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> but we love you guys a whole lot. And we're so glad to be back because we know that without this body around us, we'll never make it through the adversity that we face moving forward to the end. None of us know when that end is coming. But people need people. And I need you just like you need me. And thank God I have you because I couldn't do it without you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Rocky. Thank you, Pastor Mandy. Thank you, this church body celebration. You guys are awesome. And we love you. Thank you. Some days I climb the mountains, some days I touch the clouds, some days my best friend has been a cold, hard ground. But there's mercy new each morning, comfort through the night. My eyes are fixed on Jesus, and I'm going to be all right. I've got that hallelujah, hit it down in my soul, I've got that Doesn't mean the sun won't shine There's a season for the struggle And a season for the prize But my hope is never fading Cause it's anchored in the truth My father goes before me And he will see me through I've got that hallelujah Feeling down in my soul I've got that hallelujah
Hallelujah. We're going to take a few minutes. I want to break the word with you. And then we're going to have our chili cook off and have a wonderful time eating. Hello. My goodness, when I grew up in Pentecost uh, 40 years ago, man, all you had to do was say, hey, we're going to fellowship. And everybody went, yeah. Because you know the word fellowship is synonymous for we're going to eat. And we're getting ready to fellowship here in a little bit, but we're going to eat on something more important first. Come on. We're going to eat on the Word. Hallelujah. Our God's an awesome God, and He's amazing. And I stand amazed when I think of Him, and I think of Him all day, every day. Hallelujah. He's promised me that He'll never leave me and He'll never forsake me. But it'll be my ever-present help in my time of need. Amen. Maybe I'm the only one that ever needs Jesus. Come on. Anybody else ever need him? All the time. We do. We do. Uh, at that breath you just took in, you didn't do that on your own. That breath came from God. The day you and I were born came from God. That breath came from Jesus. He's the breath. He breathed his life into us. And Sandra, she just went back home from where she came from. Oh, come on. That's going to hit a bunch of you here in just a minute. One day, we're all going to go back from where we came from. This earth isn't our origin. This earth is our passing through point. This earth is our training ground. We're being we're training for raining. Oh, that that got a couple amens. We're training right here for raining. The word of God says that we're going to rule and reign with him. We're his bride. And if he's the king, then who are we? We're his bride, and we're, we're queens unto him, but yet the Lord looks at all of us and says we're kings and priests unto our God. We've been talking about the God who reveals himself. Today I'm going to share the third part of this with you, and I believe we'll be able to get finished with it. I want you to say with me, say, Pastor's going to get through it. With God's help, I'm going to get through it. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. We've been, we've been talking about that we have to have the wisdom of God. We need to always remember who the Lord is. We've got to always remember who He is. He created me. Mac and Peggy did not create Rocky. God created me. Because God created my mama and my daddy. And God created all my grandparents and great-grandparents all the way back to Adam and Eve, and God created Adam and Eve. So if he created all of them, he created me. Before I knew you, before you were ever in your mother's womb, I knew you. That's what he spoke to Jeremiah. And not only did he say, before you were in your mother's womb, did I know you, but he said, I also called you. He called you. He's called everybody on this planet to be his son and daughter, to be children of the living God. It's just who wants to answer the call. That's what it boils down to. We have to receive him. And he wants us to always be reminded that of who God is. I told you that God is Moriah. Moriah is the Temple Mount. Moriah is that, that place of gathering of, it, of Jerusalem. That is Moriah. And Moriah does mean the place God reveals himself. It's where God met Abraham and Isaac, as I shared last week. It's where God told him to sacrifice Isaac. 
his only son, sacrificed the promise. But Abraham so believed God that he believed that if he sacrificed his son, God was going to raise him up from the dead because he knew God to be faithful to the promise. I can't imagine a 13 or 14-year-old boy laying down as a sacrifice and all of a sudden as his daddy's raising the knife, he looks up and he says, Daddy, where's the sacrifice? And Abraham says, God will provide. In the Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew, it says the moment he said God will provide, the ram came up the other side of the mountain. Abraham confessed who God was. God will provide. He knew God as the provider. He knew God as the one that was with him always. So God provided. Everyone in this room, we all know God. We all have that Moriah. We all have that place where God has revealed himself to us. Now, if Jesus so wills, I'd love to go to Jerusalem one day. Oh, but guess what? You and I are going to actually have habitation on Moriah. Oh, John the Revelator says, I looked and I saw a holy city coming down from God out of heaven. That holy city is 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles. And we're going to live in the walls of that city. Jesus got your mama's house ready, and he said, come on home, Sandra. It's time for you to come on home. I got your house ready. It's waiting on you. Can you imagine living in a wall that's 1,500 miles deep? Oh, think about it, Selah. Think about it. But in all your wisdom, as God's giving you wisdom on this journey, get understanding. Get understanding from God about the wisdom that he's giving you. Has anyone had a revelation from God? Kasim shared a revelation from God that he got this week. Anyone else? God gave you a revelation. Yeah, he's giving you a revelation this week. Giving you a revelation this week. God's given me revelation this week. Even walking with the Lord 40 years, I got a revelation on this thing, and I want to share it with you real quick before we go any further. In God's wisdom, in God's hokmah, in who God is himself, we must understand. We must understand he's holy, he's righteous, he's just, he's wisdom, he's expressed in the background of his holy omnipotence and his omniscience, of who he is, omniscience. But today, God, or this week, God gave me an understanding on something. Listen. Everybody, I want you to look around this room at somebody real quick. Just look real quick. Tell me where you look to. Now, I understand something because I'm taking you somewhere. Let me look. I'm looking at Tony right now. I'm looking at Bubba. Guess what? Bubba's not in my presence. Let me say that again. Bubba's not in my presence. Why? I can only see the physicalness of Bubba as light shines upon Bubba. Light is a force of God. Light is God. Jesus is the light. So, in the revealing of his image, my eyes then had to catch a glimpse of his image. Now, that is a millisecond. That actually may be a nanosecond. But guess what? Even if it was a nanosecond, by the time I saw it, it was already in my past. Are you hearing me? Everything we see in the natural has already been. We look at the moon. Does anyone think the moon actually gives off light? 
No. Where does that light come from? It comes from our sun. How close is our sun? I'm looking, I'm looking to Sandy, the scientist over here. It's billions of miles away. But that light is traveling at the speed of light and reflects off of our moon, and we see it. So what we're seeing of our moon is actually 345,000 miles away or 354,000 miles away, and it's actually the sight I'm seeing is in my past because it's already been. So I say that to say this. My wife, I hadn't shared any of this with her, but what she was saying about worship earlier today, our worship is we're not worshiping in the here. We're worshiping in the unseen. If I want to truly live in the presence, it's in the presence of the Lord. And I can get in God's presence. I'm there right now. When I think about the Lord and how he saved me and how he raised me, how he lift me up, he filled me with his Holy Ghost. The moment I step in spirit, that's presence. That's present tense. Selah, think about it. We're so called up, and understand the way I'm saying this, in the past, what we're seeing here and now, when the reality is the presence of the Lord. Paul, Paul the Apostle, Saul of Tarsus, the moment he got knocked off that horse, the moment he stepped from the natural into a spirit realm, because he said, Lord, who are you? And all he saw was a bright light, but the bright light he saw was spirit, so he was seeing it in the supernatural. So he was in the presence of God. And Jesus said, I'm Jesus whom you persecute. Oh. Why is it so important that we know, remember who God is? Because he's constantly revealing himself. One of my favorite places, my wife's favorite place, we love going driving through Biltmore. Hello? Don't have to go in the house all the time or anything, but just drive through. And it's, and it's God watching it come from winter, and all of a sudden, all the bushes that we've driven by that didn't have any leaves on them, they're coming to life and watching the buds come on the tree, and all of a sudden, there's starting to be a canopy once again over the road and watching all the flowers my wife was up there, she and Jerry, with Carmen the other day and said, Honey, there are flowers. They hadn't come up. They hadn't budded. And we drove through the other night, and all the flowers were budding. And we're like, Yes! In two days, God was given this revelation of his greatness. We have to, we have to always, always remember who the Lord is. But we had also, we don't just remember who the Lord is. We got to remember what he has done for me. What he has done for me. In the book of Psalms, well, no, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5. I know you probably got all the pages turned down there because Deuteronomy is read a whole lot. He says, I am the Lord God, in verse 6, I am the Lord God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. He brought me out of my Egypt. 
He brought me out of slavery. You say, well, now wait a minute. Oh, no, no, don't, don't look at it naturally. Every one of us that have ever lived or will live on this planet has been a slave to sin. And he said, I am the Lord who brought you out of your Egypt and out of your slavery. When I think about him, when I remember what he's done, I can't forget it. And God doesn't want us to forget it. Revelation, he tells him, he says, You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony, despising not your life, shrinking back from death. Paul said, I die daily. That's the death. I die daily. I don't despise it. But I overcome by the blood of the one who brought me out of Egypt. And I overcome by the word of my testifying of what he's done. Oh, say we're going somewhere. I want you to go to Psalm 100 real quick. Mm, I'm smelling some chili. I'm smelling some chili and I'm tasting some queso. Woo! Psalm 100. All men, hear my voice. All men, turn and look at me for a second. All men. All men exhorted to praise God. All men. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with delight. Wow. Come before His presence. With joyful singing, know and fully recognize with your gratitude that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us, not we ourselves, and we are his workmanship. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with a song of thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to God. Bless and praise His name, for the Lord is good and His mercy, loving kindness are everlasting, and His faithfulness endurance to all generations. Hallelujah! Y'all know how much I love everybody, don't you? I got to tell you stuff that God's been speaking to me, because Guess what? I have to make sure as I'm getting uh, getting more mature that I don't let my getting more mature hold me back. I don't dance the way I used to dance. And some of you go, you never could. I know. I know. But guess what? Oh, my daddy, he loves it. And I may not sing as good as I used to sing. I don't know if I ever sang that good. But anyway, it's a sweet fragrance to him. I must choose that nothing, 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 nothing in this dying world is going to keep me from praising him. Nothing. Because if he inhabits my praise, if he tells me to shout with joy, oh, come on, are you hearing me? God loves it. And if it opens heaven over me, then what God's wanting to do with me is free to be done. Because I am removing obstacles. See, we're, we're, real, we're real good about going, God, if you want this to happen, you do it. God's going, 
God, if you want it to happen, you go ahead and do it. And he keeps speaking to us. And we keep saying, God, if you want it to happen, do it. And God's just saying, let go. Let go. We must remember. In remembering what he has done, praise and worship and worshiping Almighty God, our praise and our worship of the Lord is a living testimony to the Lord we won't forget. I won't forget what you've done, God. I won't forget. I'm building a monument. I'm building a testimony to you in my praise of who you are. You set me free. You set this former drug addict free. You set this former alcoholic. You set me free from the bondages that I went in. You brought me out of Egypt. You brought me out, brought me into a holy relationship with you. You delivered me. And you say, but I didn't do those really bad things. No, no, no. You did bad enough things that you were going to the same hell I was going to. There's not levels, and we're going, well, now, you just stole a piece of gum, so you're going to this level. Oh, you're bad. You did this. Are you hearing me? Hell's hell. But every time we praise and worship, we're declaring. If we're not praising and worship, and here at Celebration, we choose to do it. We choose to do it according to the Word and by the Word. Y'all do realize we're singing the word. You do realize that? So what we're doing is we're speaking back to the Father what he has already spoken to us concerning himself. We're reminding God, God, I know you. You see, that beautiful song you just sang. <laughs> reminding of who God is. The song you and my wife, y'all were singing earlier. So you're reminding of God. Deidre, the song that you sang. Tanya, the song you, every song in the worship service today was reminding God who he is and what he's done for me. Come on. What did, what did Paul tell Timothy? Fan into a flame that gift that's in you. What's the greatest gift we've been given? Salvation. What is the symbol of our salvation? He gave us His Holy Spirit living in us. Are you hearing me? He's living in us. And the Spirit of God wants to worship through us. And express how great God is. So I'm, I know I'm speaking to people, you know this. But I must live it out. I must never forget. Never forget. I'll never forget. On that recovery table, when God brought me back after I'd left my body, and he said, tell my bride, get them ready. I'm coming for you. And that's the mandate he gave to me. To tell his bride he's coming soon. I look for him today. But if he doesn't come today, I'm looking for him tomorrow. Hello? I'm ready for his appearing. Third thing I share with you, and I'll, I'll close here. When we reach that point, when we're at that place that we're wanting to worship God and go after and tell Him how great He is to us, we must always remember that every day, every day, we are confronted with what Joshua said to the people of Israel. Let me read it to you because I even I quote it different than where it's at.
In Joshua chapter number 24, Oh, got two pages stuck together. Give me one second. He says in verse 15, If it is accept, unacceptable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day, say this day, whom you will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And the people answered, Far be it from us to abandon, reject the Lord to serve other gods. Every day, look at me, every day we are being bombarded by the world. Serve my God. Serve the gods I serve. Every day we're being bombarded with it. Every day we must choose whom we will serve. Choose you this day whom you will serve. We're being confronted with it every day. Every day I, I stand before the Lord in prayer and I say, Lord, it is unacceptable for me. To not serve you, I take it and I turn it. It's unacceptable for me not to serve you. For I will serve the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob. I will serve the only one true God, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the one who is the same yesterday and forever, the one who came, the lamb slain from the foundations of the world and gave his life so that I could be set free. And as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I have to choose every day, and I will choose until Jesus raptures us out of here or until Jesus says, come on home, your house is ready. I'm going to choose every day whom I'm going to serve. I will not say, oh, man, that was awesome the way I served the Lord last week and put it on cruise control this week. My relationship with Jesus is an everyday relationship. i got to do it today. I'm going to have to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it until Jesus comes. I'm just talking about I want to know, know a God that keeps revealing himself. So if, if that's going to happen, and I have to understand, because when Joshua was speaking to, to the people, he was talking to about to a people that had been serving other gods. And as they had been serving these other gods, they had started taking up the habits of those that they were uh, worshiping these other gods. I want you to listen to me for a second. Everything is spiritual. Everything. Everything is spiritual. God, the Spirit, God, created it all. So it's all spiritual before it's ever natural. So if I choose to go out and worship another God, I am worshiping another spirit. Are you hearing me? I know the bondage that I used to be in. I know the grip it had on me. I had to cut ties. I had to break relationships. I had to break curses. Are you hearing me? Alcoholism ran through my family. I had to stand and say, what I have been, Jesus has set me free, and I break the curse of alcoholism off of this household. It stops now. Why do you think they call it spirits? 
Why do they hang signs over ABC stores and call it spirits? Are you hearing me? In the scriptures, Jesus speaks about how pharmakia will be in the end of days. That is dependency on drugs for everything. Now, drugs, they help medicate. They help take care of things. Please understand me. I take blood pressure medicine. I do that. I take a cholesterol medicine. Understand that. Understand what I'm saying. But when things change me up here, in the hospital, they put me on, uh, well, prednisone, or what was it? Percocet. And I'm sitting in the hospital room after heart surgery, and I'm going, sweetie, did you know that all these rooms are only about six feet high? And I can see all the way to the end of the hall. I'm walking down the hallway, and Christian's walking with me. And we come to the other hallway to get back to the room. And I said, man, they put an incline on this side of the hallway. And my wife went to the desk and said, I want him off of this medicine, and I want him off of it now. And guess what? I haven't had one since. And we broke the any hold that it had on my life. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? Why do we have to do these things? I'm glad you asked. Let me give you this. Matthew 12. I won't go through the reading of everything, but in Matthew 12 and in 43, Jesus is speaking about when a person gets free, their house has been swept clean. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It says, the spirits that were removed from that house, that they will come back to see if there's any place for them. And if the house is still kept clean, then they go away. But it says that if they find a place, they will go and they will get seven more just like them and come back to that house. Are you hearing me? The addiction I had to alcohol and drugs it was up to me remaining clean in Jesus. He did the work. I just had to be in Him and stay in Him. I couldn't imagine what I was doing coming back seven times worse. Are you hearing me? Well, Pastor, I don't believe that way. That's okay. That's what the Word says. I'm standing on the Word. I'm speaking the Word. We're living in a spiritual world, and this spiritual world is fighting the believers because he's thinking if he can wear us out and get us not believe in God, then he can do whatever, everything he wants to do. That's what's put us in the problem that America's in right now. America should have been standing in the school classrooms in the 60s when one person was trying to take prayer out of school. We should have been standing in the classrooms in the 60s when Madeline Murray O'Hare tried to do away with the Pledge of Allegiance and everything else in our schools. We should have been standing when Roe v. Wade took place. We should have been standing all these years, but the body of Christ didn't do it. He that the sons sets free is free indeed. It's time for the body of Christ to rise up and be the body of Christ. It's time for the body of Christ to rise up and say, Jesus is Messiah. Jesus is Lord of my life.
You say, Pastor, I, 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 I'm getting a glimpse. I'm getting a glimpse. I'm getting a glimpse. Okay, the fourth thing is this. Live in his presence. If I want God to keep revealing himself to me, I've got to live in his presence. Got to live there. Paul said he prayed without ceasing. Just pay attention. He prayed without ceasing. What does praying without ceasing mean? He stayed in communication with God. He talked with God all day long. It's amazing. He'll talk to me all day. I'll be riding down the road, and all of a sudden I find myself, and I'm singing a song. And then when I, when I get back home or if my wife's with me, I go, Sweetie, what's, what's the title of that song? How's that song totally go? Because all of a sudden I'm singing, singing lines of the song about how awesome God is. And the moment I start doing that, I'm in his presence because he inhabits my praises. And I'll start thanking him for who he is. Every Sunday, every day, I read it over this body. Psalm 91. That's the promise of God's presence. It's a promise. He's a phenomenal God, is he not? So, I've just finished this series. It's how God wants to reveal himself. But it requires something of us. We have to choose that we want to live in God's revelation of who he is. Every day. There are people in this room that there are times that I'll get a phone call from you for exactly when I need a phone call or a text. There'll be times that God will put someone on my heart and I call them or I text them. They go, how'd you know? But God just said, call so-and-so. Call so-and-so. That's how the body, that's how we're supposed to be. Holy Spirit. We're going to break bread here in just a moment. And when we break bread, that today is going to be our communion time. They were sitting at the Last Supper, as we have called it, but they were sitting at the Passover feast. Jesus, he lifted up the bread broke it, said, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do it in remembrance of me. Then when he took the cup, he said, this is my cup. This is the covenant of my new blood. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance. Father, I know that there are those that have already opened their cups and drunk out of them. But Father, all of us are going to be sitting at a meal in a moment. We thank you for what you've done for us. We thank you that you gave your body. You bore our sicknesses. You were bruised. You were bruised for us. Those hurts and those pains. Those aches and those pains. You took them upon yourself. It's by your stripes that we are healed. We thank you for that. As we partake of this meal, we'll do it in remembrance of you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. And he took the cup and he said, This cup, it's a new covenant. It's in my blood. And as often as you drink of it, you're going to do it in remembrance of me. 
the Lord as we partake we'll do it in remembrance of you and all you've done for us Lord you're amazing you are the awesome God and we worship you we thank you for your healing power we thank you that you're the God that lifts every yoke you carry every burden. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, Father, I know you've been speaking to me personally, Lord, through these weeks as you've been putting all this together. And, Father, I thank you. I do not want to get caught up in this life. As I live in your spirit, I see from a different perspective because I'm seated in heavenly places with you. So, Lord, right now as we speak the word of God over our bodies, we thank you that he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty whose power no enemy can withstand. And I'll say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, and my God in whom I trust with great confidence, and on whom I rely. For He'll save you from the fowler, the trap of the fowler, and from the deadly pestilence. And He'll cover you and completely protect you with His pinions. And under His wings you will find refuge. And his faithfulness is a shield and a wall. You'll not be afraid of the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction, the sudden death that lays waste at noon. A thousand will fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but danger will not come near you. You will only be a spectator as you look on with your eyes and witness the divine repayment of the wicked, as you watch safely from the shelter of the Most High, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High your dwelling place, no evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels in regard to you to protect and defend and to guard you in all of your ways of obedience and service. They'll lift you up in their hands <coughs> so that you don't even strike your foot against a stone. You'll tread upon the lion and the cobra and the young lion and the serpent you'll trample under your foot because they set their love on me. Therefore, I will save them. I will set them securely on high because they know my name. They confidently trust and rely on me knowing I will never abandon them, no, never. They call unto me, and I will answer them, and I'll be with them in trouble, and I'll rescue them and honor them, and with a long life I'll satisfy them, and I'll let them see my salvation, declares the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. You may be watching online today. You may be in this service. I'm asking every head to be bowed. If you do not know the Lord, today's the day of your salvation. Today is the day the Lord's speaking to you and saying, Surrender your life to me. You may be in this room and you may say, Pastor, I've asked Jesus to be my Savior. Praise God. That's the key. But it may be that you haven't been walking close to Him. Now's the day for you to run back. Time is short. The day is difficult. The Lord says, Return to me. Return to me. And I'm going to pray a prayer right now for salvation, for those who don't know the Lord, for returning to the Lord, for those who have known you and aren't walking with him right now. So pray with me this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. I know you came to this earth to give your life for me. I thank you that you bore my sin at Calvary. 
I thank you you took my punishment at Calvary. I know that you gave your life. You died in my place. So right now, I ask you to forgive me of my sins, and I receive the gift of your salvation. I know you were buried in a tomb, and on the third day you rose from the dead. So right now, I choose that I will live for you, and I'll walk in a newness of life. From this day forward, I am yours, and you are mine. And I declare, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you ask Jesus into your heart or you ask Jesus to come and forgive you of the sin that you've been in and start walking fresh with him again, I encourage you. You must be in a household of faith. It's imperative in this day. Find you a church that believes the Word of God, that stands on the Word of God, that's not willing to compromise God's Word. If you do not have a church home and you live in the Morganton area, come be with us. We'd love to grow together in the things of your kingdom and declare the greatness of our God. Amen? Amen. Give them a warm hand. Hallelujah. Stand with me, if you will. We're going to close our service in prayer, but we're also praying a blessing over our meal. Yes. 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 I will. I will. Everybody's welcome to stay. There's no cost for the meal, but any donations that are being given, the men are setting up a project fund to do projects in in families' homes and different places of what's needed. And uh, we're, we're doing that. So any gifts that would be given, they're going to be going to the men's project fund, okay? All right. And I'm going to, yes, we're going to pray right now over the blessing and uh, uh, the blessing of this food. So, Father, we thank you for this food that we're about to receive. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have made hands that have prepared it. And, Lord, we receive it. And we pray blessings on those individuals. Lord, we ask you to bless it and make it nourishment to our bodies. But, Lord, as we do this and as we fellowship together, we're doing it in remembrance of you. So, Father, we thank you for your blessing. And, Lord, be with all of our church family out there that's watching today. And, Lord, we look forward to seeing them again soon. Or, Lord, we look forward to seeing them once again online. So, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you again soon. God bless.